Are you seeking fulfillment for your life? Do you want freedom from fear? That's why we're here. Welcome to Jesus 101, introducing you to the real Jesus. And now, here's your host, Elizabeth Talbot. Welcome to Jesus 101. I'm so excited you decided to join us for this program. It's one of my favorite stories in the book of Acts. We are continuing with our ongoing series in this book, and um, we have entitled it Proclaiming Jesus. Before we go to our main chapter for the day, I would like to share something with you about my childhood. Well, this is a picture of um, my dad and my mom and myself when we went to Andrews University. As you know, our special guest this whole series is Pastor Dwight Nelson, who is the pastor at the Pioneer Memorial Church in Andrews University. And here um, I am right there <laughs> at, the, at the Pioneer Memorial Church, 12 years old. And I have another photo to show you in the summer because obviously there's a lot of snow going on there in the winter. We have one in the summer here. And um, why am I showing you these photos? Well, when I got there, I was 12 years old and, and I didn't really belong because, you know, I didn't speak English and, and uh, you know, I, I just did good in math because the numbers were the same, but everything else was very difficult. And, and so I kind of felt very lonely there. And um, I got a friend, her name, was Linnell Blason. She decided to take me in. And uh, I all of a sudden belonged somewhere. And, and it made a huge difference in my life. Uh, I would play with her. I was part of the group now. And she would take me places. And I was so thankful that I even wrote about her in a book, uh, the Gospel of Luke. Many years later, almost 40 years later, I, I got to see her again and embrace her and thank her for what she did for me to include me. She kept saying, I didn't do anything. You were just my friend. And I said, no, you did so much. You will never know how much you did for a, for a girl like me, 12 years old. Well, today we're studying a story, actually a breakthrough, really, in the first century church, when they realized that everybody really belonged to this movement that wanted to be. Anybody that wanted to believe in Jesus Christ could belong, even if they were not of the same background uh, that the other people, in this case, the Jewish people. So we're thankful that we have Pastor Dwight Nelson from Pioneer Memorial Church. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Isn't that a great photo from, from back then? You know, when I got to a Pioneer, Linnell was a college student. Are you serious? So you know great, Linnell? Yeah, a great lady. Oh, yeah. she made a huge difference in my life. I will be forever thankful. Yeah, that's because, cool. Yeah. I mean, really big difference in mm -hmm. my life. So mm -hmm. anyways, today we're going to study one of my favorite, favorite chapters. It's chapter 10 of the book of Acts. Yeah, I love and, the story. And uh, <clears throat> it's the moment when everybody, uh, well, actually, Peter is struggling to, to know that everybody's truly mm -hmm. part of this call to, to, to be part of the kingdom of God, right. even Gentiles, right? So it's going to be a little hard for him, and God is going to be patient with Peter like he's with us uh, to understand that, in fact, Cornelius, one that was not from the Jewish um, race, actually could be part of this and surely receive the Holy Spirit too, right? Yep. So I'm excited about this. And we're going to actually start on chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. If you feel like reading, let's start there. Let's do it. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. Mm -hmm. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Yeah, it's interesting because in, it, we find this God-fearing and we say, okay, they're God-fearing people, but God-fear is actually a term. Right. It's a term for those who um, worship the God of Israel, mm -hmm. but they are not becoming Jewish. They're not being circumcised, and mm -hmm. so, but they still worship the God of Israel, right? So anytime we see a God fear in the New Testament, that's what it means. And he's not just a God fearer, but he is putting, if, if we can use the phrase, he's putting his money where his mouth is. Yeah, 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 so exactly. Not, he's, he's not only do I believe in your God, let me help your, your religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me grow, exactly, help grow it exactly. up. Exactly. Well, Caesarea, yeah. I have a, a, a fun picture from Caesarea. Look at it. This is somebody taking a picture of Chris. Chris is our main producer for right. this ministry. 
and uh, that's me. We are in the aqueduct of Caesarea. This is the one that is right by, by the, the water, right? Right, right? And it was quite a center. As a matter of fact, most of the things that will happen later on in the book of Acts with Paul go through there. Are in Caesarea mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. Caesarea was the center, their, their military center, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's really interesting because you can still see the aqueduct and, and a bunch of things from, from back then, right? Were you there in Caesarea? I've been there, walked right along. This is an incredible piece of architecture. You know, they, they, they came up with that uh, arch, the Roman arch. Yes. And yeah, and it's, it's long. It's, it's long, just, yeah. right along the coastline. And, and even into, the theater, I mean, so, so impressive yes. that you still have it from back yeah. then, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was a great trip. And somebody took a picture of us while we were surveying where to tape, <laughs> you know? So, so it's, we have it in the office. It's fun. So here we are in Caesarea. And uh, again, we find uh, the ninth hour that we found in previous stories. Mm, the ninth hour. Uh, the hour of prayer and the hour of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, and he saw a vision. Uh, every time I see a person that is not from the regular church yeah. in the first century, uh -huh. and I see them having visions, I'm reminded how God has a PhD in communication. Hmm. He can communicate with anybody. I mean, he, he wishes. Said, yeah. Anybody. Yeah. I mean, in, in the Old Testament, he sent, you know, things to Pharaoh, uh, to the Magi. I mm. mean, it's not that he only communicates with certain type of people. With the in crowd. Yeah. There is no in crowd with him. It, well, but that's the point. It's a human that a race. <laughs> it's a human yeah. race. Exactly. So let's go with the vision if you want to mm. read a little bit mm -hmm. on three on and stop where you want to. So one day... At about three o'clock in the afternoon. So my translation turns the ninth hour into three. Okay. And that was the same time that uh, J Peter and John. Yeah, that's why I two, said two we just saw a story. That, and they're, they're going yeah, through the exactly, gate beautiful. So hour. same time, hour of prayer, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? God is not only moved by his prayers, but he's put, by he's the put feet on his uh, mm -hmm. convictions. And mm -hmm. he said, both of them have come up to God as a memorial offering. Now, send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, mm -hmm. who is called Peter. He's staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. Okay. Now, um, before we go on, uh, we're going to show you a video of this area. Um, when Chris and I and, and a whole group went up, mm. up there, we did a video coming uh, at, at Joppa, you know, because Joppa was not that far away from, from um, Caesarea. Caesarea. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's beautiful. It's by the sea. And, and so we're coming fr from, you can see Tel Aviv on the other side. And so we're coming up to Joppa, and there is actually a door that says Simon the Tanner. You're really? Yes, yes, right where Simon lived. Okay. So you can go visit the door. Yeah. You know, you, you can't go in, but uh, where actually supposedly uh, Peter was staying in Joppa. And um, so we're going to show you that video right now, and then we will continue. We arrived at the beautiful modern city of Tel Aviv towards evening as the sun glinted off the glass of the tall buildings. But just a short walk along the beach to the south lies the ancient city of Jaffa. We are so excited to be able to show you this ancient city behind me. Even though you see many modern things going on right now, people playing on the beach, this is a very, very old city uh, called Jaffa. Many things happen here, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, you might remember the prophet Jonah, who actually sailed from this town to go to Tarshish. But during the New Testament, you might remember the vision of Peter, of the unclean foods, not to call them unclean, which was about people not to call anybody unclean, to know that God wanted everybody in the salvation history to come into the kingdom of God. So this city behind me is quite exciting. This is the Mediterranean Sea, and we're gonna get a little closer now, but Jaffa, remember, has a great history of thousands of years. As we near Jaffa, the sand began to slip down behind St. Peter's Church, the very building constructed to commemorate the vision that Peter had so many years ago, close to that site. Climbing the hill into the city, we came upon a sign detailing Jaffa's 4,000 year history. 
as we rounded the corner and entered St. Peter's Church, you could hear the visitors singing and giving thanks. Towering over the audience at the front of this ornate church is a beautiful painting of Peter's vision. Just outside the church lies a quaint little market that blends the old with the new. Well, here we are. We're coming very, very close to Simon the Tanner's house. This is where Peter had the vision. You can see the sun is setting behind us and everybody's saying Shabbat Shalom uh, because it's Friday evening and Sabbath has started. So here we're very excited to actually see the house or at least the traditional site of where uh, Peter had that vision that no one should be called unclean, which is a very relevant lesson for what is going on here in Israel nowadays. Wasn't that great? It's, it's, it's so beautiful there. Uh, have you walked by, by the beach I've never there? seen it. And it says Simon the Tanner? Yes. No, that wasn't a tanning booth <laughs> no, no, or no. something. <laughs> that was, no, yeah, tanning was that, a different profession back then. That's the leather. People yeah, are wondering, yeah, what's a tanner? Yeah, a tanner yeah. is somebody who's working that leather over, yes. crafting it. Yes, yeah. and maybe, maybe uh, I'm not sure exactly why Peter... Uh, ended up there, but I guess he was a known he person. A, and he could have been a believer himself. Yeah, Simon. Exactly. Two Simons together. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, Peter is there, mm -hmm. and now we get another vision because because the same way that God spoke to, <laughs> to Ananias in our previous program to go see Paul, mm -hmm. now he has to get Peter ready because uh, it's, it's kind of crazy, but Peter has a lot is more a lot more prejudice than than Cornelius is. So it will take a lot more work from God to help mm -hmm. Peter so he can go than it took f for God to get Cornelius to send somebody to get him. What strikes me as well, Elizabeth, is that both of these visions, Peter's going to have one right now. Cornelius has had one, but both of them come at the time of prayer. Mm -hmm. We just can't blow off this this idea of God saying, hey, I want time alone with you. Mm -hmm. I, we need to talk. Mm -hmm. Can we talk mm -hmm. uninterrupted, please? It's a big deal to him. Mm -hmm. And obviously it opens the door for him to do big deal stuff in our lives mm -hmm. as we open ourselves up to him. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes when we come to these times alone with God, mainly we tell him things. Right, I've but, got this, I need this, this, this. Yeah, but this, God this. actually wants to communicate Good with point. us. Yeah. And, and here uh, we have the expansion. The gospel is starting to be preached outside of the regular boundaries. Mm -hmm. And Peter needs to understand that the gospel is not just mm -hmm. for him and his group. Because he's never gone outside of his his cultural religious cultural exactly group and he, he still observes that yeah, yeah he still observes that and we have other instances in the New Testament where he had a hard time even sitting together in the same table yep. and right with with people that didn't think like him mm -hmm. or believe like him so and I think in some ways I remember a teenager in in a group of young adults that I used to lead many 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 years ago um, <laughs> we had a great group, young adult group. And one time she says, I know we're supposed to, you know, want other people, but I really like our group the way it is. Mm -hmm. I don't want newcomers. <laughs> Keep them out. Yeah, it was so funny because she said that. She was being honest. Well, she was being, I was going to say, she's yeah, yeah. honest. Most people feel that way. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, but we yeah. don't want others, yes. newcomers to yes. come yes. in. Just, and, it, it upsets our security. Yeah, this yeah. was so drastic mm -hmm. that God actually had to send a very special vision before the people that Cornelius sent mm -hmm. would actually arrive because Peter wasn't going to go with them because the law said a Jewish person could not enter the house of a Gentile. Mm -hmm. So Let me um, read this. So yes. I'll pick it up in verse 10. So Peter, he's going up to the roof to pray. That's in mm -hmm. verse 9. He mm -hmm. becomes hungry mm -hmm. while he's having his private worship, and he wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. Mm -hmm. And he saw heaven opened up, something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. So he, he, he's all eyes now. Yep. In verse 12, the sheet contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Mm -hmm. And then a voice told him, get up and eat, Peter. Get up, kill and eat. Yes, and Peter says no. No, because, no, Lord, I have never eaten anything unholy or unclean. So we can imagine that the animals that are there do not qualify. Dietary law. Yeah. Right. They're so, not clean animals. So, uh, and, and he's not going to have this vision only once. He's going to have it three times. Yeah. It's like God is saying, 
we actually need to get this into your head, right. Peter. It's something really new. Yeah, and and okay, so let's 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 do this. We we got the vision. Can you help me? All right. So imagine you're up there and all of a sudden you see this sheet. It says that it came down from heaven with reptiles and four-legged things and birds and things that he couldn't eat. Right. So once and he and it goes away and he's thinking, what was that? Again he comes right. and, and he sees all these animals and he keeps saying, I can't eat these And these, these are animals. listed in Leviticus 11, 11. as forbidden exactly. uh, for human exactly. consumption. So it goes away and he's still thinking about it and God says, one more time, just in case, don't forget that these go ahead and kill and eat. And so Peter says, I can't do this. You know that I don't eat and clean food. And then God actually makes... A, says, okay, I'm going to tell you what, they're, they're, they're Here's my punchline, he says. Yeah. Yes, they're, go ahead. Yeah. The voice spoke to him a second time because he keeps protesting. Yes. Uh -huh. And here, here, here are the words of the voice. Do not call anything impure mm. that God has made clean. Mm -hmm. Do you get that, Peter? Don't call it impure if I've called it yeah, clean. Yeah, and Peter's completely... Uh, Confused. Lost. Because, yeah, because he knows that those meats, uh, those animals are unclean. But later on, he will say, God taught me. A little later on when he talks to Cornelius, he said, God taught me that I cannot call any person yeah. unclean. So obviously mm -hmm. he, he got the message mm -hmm. somewhere along the line that mm -hmm. this wasn't about food, um, that it was actually about people. And it says that uh, verse 17, while Peter was greatly perplexed, I can imagine saying, mm -hmm. what, is he changing all the rules now? Mm -hmm. When he was uh, uh, perplexed in mind uh, to what the vision was, the men who had been sent by Cornelius having asked directions for Simon's house appear at the gate and they called out and, and now Peter was ready to receive them. Yeah. Uh, and it must have blown the men away because they're saying, is there a somebody named Simon in this house besides the owner of the house? Mm -hmm. I said, well, as a matter of fact, and there's I, another Simon. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that was and, confirmation. And I'm going to make a point that I know that that um, might not be so, but I'm still going to make it because uh, in most Bibles, this is that three men came uh, to see him. Mm -hmm. And I always saw a connection between the three times that the, the vision comes and the three men that show up, even though there's some earlier manuscripts that could be read as two men. So probably the issue is for emphasis to show it three times. But I thought it was interesting that that at least my version of the Bible says there were three men and three times the vision came as to almost say, okay, Peter, uh, you have to receive these men no matter what. So mm -hmm. maybe they were more mm -hmm. or less, but the truth is he was emphasizing, <laughs> go with these people. And because it was already late, Peter invites them in, which is already a huge issue. Mm -hmm. And they spend the night at that house because Gentiles couldn't come into the Jewish people's house right, either. Right. So this is a little step for Peter, but the next step is to is go the, over there. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where we're going to get started. Peter goes there and he finds an eager audience when he gets there. Cornelius has been waiting. Yeah. He knows he's going to come. Yeah. He believes the angel that the man is going to show up. Mm -hmm. So he has a all his family and friends just in that space. Isn't this a dream of any evangelist? Absolutely. <laughs> that you walk to a place where they're eager yep. to hear. The Hoping you'll come. Yes, and it's so interesting because um, because the Cornelius is trying to show him all kinds of honor. Um, look at verse 25. Mm -hmm. When Peter entered, which I don't know how Peter did it, probably the vision is the only reason why he did it, because just to step inside the house we have taken all that Peter you know had learned from Jesus when Peter entered Cornelius met him and fell at his feet and tried to worship him mm -hmm. because he said him this must be a holy man if if I get a vision from mm -hmm. an angel to go you know get this man from right and so Peter what did Peter do Peter reaches down he says stand up stand up I am only a man myself. Yeah, and so he said to them on verse 28, very interesting here, you yourselves know that it's unlawful for a man who is a Jew to associate with a foreigner or to visit him. And mm -hmm. yet God has shown me, here we have the interpretation of the vision. God has shown me that I should not ca call any man unholy or unclean. Yeah. So Peter he himself- got He got the message of yes. those th that three times Yes, sheet. yes. Yeah. But even though he got the message, I think he was ready to preach to them. I don't think he was ready to accept them into the community still. And I, I, I'm going to prove that to you in a yeah. moment. Yeah. 
So let's go. Let's continue. Uh, Cornelius actually tells him why mm -hmm. what had happened. Rehearses so, the whole story. Yes, tells go ahead. Him the angel came. Read part of it if you want. Yeah, read part of it, but it's just a repeat. Mm -hmm. He said three days ago I was in prayer. I'm praying earnestly. Suddenly, shoo, there's this <laughs> being in white standing, and he says, "Your prayers have been heard." Call for Simon. He's in the house of another man named Simon. Yeah. Yada 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 yeah, yada. Yeah. And therefore. Here That's we are. why you're here. Yeah, Ta -da. we're all here waiting for yes. you. Yeah. So here says verse 33. So I sent to you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. Now then, we are all here, present before God, to hear what you have been commanded by the Lord. So mm -hmm. they're like, we're here, we're excited. What's going to go on? Now it's interesting for me that the one that is going to get the greater lesson here is Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Aside from Cornelius getting the gospel and understanding right. who Jesus Cornelius is. Cornelius gets the gift, but Peter gets the, the point. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. I like that. Exactly. Cornelius gets the gift and, and Peter gets the point. I like that. That, that, that was a smart thing to say. I, I like it. Not that you don't say a lot of smart things, but that Bless one you. was really nice. Okay, so verse 34. And here it comes. All right, yeah. go ahead. Peter began to speak. I now realize, see, I got it, I got it. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know, um, I always have a hard time with this verse. Why? I, I, I now get it. And I'm going, now? You, you spent three years with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus has ascended to heaven. And now you get it? I mean, how long did you need? I mean, how, how long does it take for us to understand that everyone, yeah. men and women, black and white, young and old, yellow, green, and belly button rings and green hair, all are called by God. Right. I mean, how long does it take? He took Peter, he says, okay, now I get it. And you're like, you walk with Jesus, you didn't get it before? Yeah, but you know, you, you think of what Peter saw. He saw Jesus with the woman at the well, the yes, Samaritan woman. He saw Jesus with a Syrophoenician woman, which would be in this very area, by yes, the way, yes. because uh, yes. it's near Caesarea. Yeah. He's seen these instances. He saw Jesus with the uh, Roman centurion. Yeah. And he said to the Roman centurion, you remember Jesus in Matthew 8, he says, listen, I haven't, I've been hanging around the saved all my life. I've never seen anybody that have faith like this pagan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Peter's heard this, but you can hear stuff and never get it. Yeah. You can just hear it and say, well, that's an exception. Yeah, yeah, and the, exactly. most of us live behind the uh, excuse, that's an exception. Yes. Well, that's just an exception. Yes. And God is saying, no. yo, Pete, this is not an exception. This is the you big boy. deal. <laughs> you boy. Listen up. I'm talking to you. Yes, that's, yeah. that's right. And so he explained to, to, to Cornelius mm -hmm. the gospel. Actually, uh, it's a beautiful explanation, by the way, especially yes, verse 38. Yes, and let me read verse 36 first. The word which he sent to the sons of Israel, preaching peace. Actually, the original says the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. it, it actually uses the Evangelion word. Through Jesus Christ, and then he will explain. Go ahead, on verse 38. You know what happened throughout the providence of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. Now here comes the Jesus story, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and with power, and how he went about, speaking of Jesus, how he went about, well, I wish this were a one sentence description of my life, how he went about doing good. Mm -hmm. He just went about doing good mm -hmm. and healing all who were under the power of the devil mm -hmm. because God was with him. Yeah. Yeah. And that is that is the point. And then, then mm. he continues and explains the cross. Yep. They put him to death by hanging on the cross and God raised him up on the third day and granted that he become visible, et cetera, et cetera. And so he ordered us to preach, verse 42. Mm -hmm. And so they're preaching Jesus. While they are preaching Jesus, something happens. Yeah. And this is a point that I am very interested in making. So first tell us what happens and then- well, Verse 44, gonna... very clear. While Peter was still speaking these words, so he's in the middle of his homily, <clears throat> he's unfolding the gospel, telling the Jesus story, boom. The he it's just like the heavens are rent and the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. So there is this, we saw Pentecost a few days ago when we were going through uh, Acts 2, but now something similar is obvious that there's this force in the room, there's this power and person in the room. And, and, and he everybody, falls on, everybody, on the, everybody, and they start everybody. speaking in tongues and all kinds of things. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you my point. Okay. I have used my point so many times. So there is an order in the book of Acts. Now check this out and tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. People, 
hear the gospel. I'm going to use this water because I don't have any other water. They get baptized. Yes. And then they receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. So fire is going to be the Holy Spirit. All right. Always in the book of Acts is this order. Mm -hmm. So they get, they understand Jesus. They get baptized. They get the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Every single time, except this one. That's this how? time... Peter was not going to baptize him because even though he saw the vision and the whole thing, he wasn't ready to say, okay, I'm going to baptize you into the membership. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time and the only time in the, in, the, in the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit goes out of order. Yeah. So we have the person, mm -hmm. we have the, the, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit falling on them and Peter saying, wow, if God already gave them the Spirit, I have to baptize them. So many times when we are very close-minded, with visions and everything, God will get ahead of us out of order mm -hmm. and do things uh, out of order so that we say, hey, this is obvious that God has done this. Mm -hmm. What do you think about don't, it? Don't you love that about God, though, <laughs> that he's willing to color outside the box? Yes. Okay, this is the way I normally do it. Yes. But if it's going to work another way, I'm outside the box. Yeah. I'm not confined to one rigid Modus operandi. Yeah, but I think that's very important because, um, because especially with things that we have always done it this way. Right. And we can't get out of that. And God says, it's time to get out of it. And so uh, Peter had brought people with him from Joppa uh, that were Jewish too. And they witnessed that too. And this will be his defense later on when he has to defend to Jerusalem to say why he baptized Gentiles for the first time in history. Yeah. And he will say, hey, God had chosen them. The Holy Spirit fell on that. I had to baptize him because he got out of order. Yep. I love when God gets out of order. <laughs> and I have used this for many other things that our church and many other churches are mm. dealing with is to say, no, it has to be this way. Well, no, I think the Holy Spirit sometimes shows the way mm -hmm. and is sometimes out of order. Have you ever heard that little, uh, that little uh, saying? I scribbled it down here. I think it was a guy named Richard Markham. He drew a circle that shut me out, heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that drew him in. Oh, that's and nice. that's God, the circle, draw, he just drawing him in. Peter said, no, they, they don't belong. No, 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 no. no God they're said they in. Do. Bring them in. Yeah. Thank you for being with us, Dwight. I'm going to head to the cross to finish the program. I think this, the program today is, is one of those programs that kind of shakes you up a little bit when you think you know all things. I remember what it, it meant for me that I was included by this friend in Andrews University made a huge difference to say, you're part of us. So I put all these little people on top of the cross, men and women and old and young. You know, we're all included. We're all included in this invitation. And if somebody has told you that you don't qualify, well, today I want to tell you the only qualification that we have is that we are so utterly unworthy that we need a savior. So guess what? you do qualify.